Hello and welcome to the assembly guide for the Maraca. Um, I've laid everything you will need for the build out here on the desk, uh, which is you may need a hammer, pliers are always good, these combo here printer you should have them. Uh, you may need this for a bit of deep burring for like elephant's foot and stuff. You need scissors and a lighter for the strings. Two parts of string. Um, I've found this stuff here, which is extremely stretchy and has good power. I don't know if you can get it, but this is the brand I'm using right now. Um, the shorter one is for the return of the trigger. Then I would say you probably need uh, silicone oil or any other lubricant you trust and a bit of sandpaper. About the sandpaper, you will probably need it like if you put these two parts together along here and along here and oil here and here. So all of this rail space is well lubricated for the slide. Um, the slide has, well it can have some warping problems if your cooling isn't set up right or you have a drafty room you're printing in and if you print it laying down flat you can have some warp back here which can interfere with the sliding movement so that's why I'm using a bit of silicone oil. You may also want to put it right here because this will eventually start wearing and it'll squeak quite badly. Um, about this you can also print it flat back here if you can't print it like that because this is quite a, a drastic bridge but that shouldn't matter too much. Like you can see it's got a little bit of sag here but if that bothers you can just slice it off using a scalpel or exacto knife. Yeah, should also print like this, but probably not too well. Right, other notes about printing. The trigger and the trigger linkage. These people are way too loud out there. Should be printed as solid as possible. I was using 10 parameters for that, so it doesn't start flexing on you and just, yeah. You don't want this to bend before this part can push down the string. Okay, enough talking, let's get to building. Um, starting off, we take the barrel and the trigger linkage. This has a little slot back here. And you put it in with the little knob here facing downwards. Put that in there so it's nice and aligned. Then we take the long, medium-sized pin here and put that in. Little note about the pins, orientation matters. So if you put it in like that, sideways, it probably won't go in for me. If I put it in like that, it's very easy to move in. So I'm gonna turn it a couple of degrees so it's nice and firm and won't slide out. Now it's not fully in. There we go. If your uh, pins absolutely won't fit, you can just sand them down or glue them in. And if the tolerance is way off, you may have to reprint them, but it's a couple of grams of filament. I think you can afford that if your printer is that weird with tolerances. Next up, we put this part on. I like putting on the bottom and the top pin first, so you can have relatively free rain with the middle two ones without any sliding issues. There we go. And we can set that aside for a moment. Um, yeah, this is the lock. I was getting curious and slipped that on, but yeah, it goes off. So yeah, this you print this little paddle so it's a bit more comfortable. Let's slide it on the back here. If it won't budge, just give it a whack with a hammer. Then we take the slide. We take this part, this is the pusher, and put it in so the longer bit is on the bottom. Because this is a reverse, like upside down system. The pusher has a little hole. You line that up with this hole. It should stick out in the back a bit. We take another one of those short pins. And then we throw that in here. Couple times. 
nice with the hammer. And that's good. Um, next up we need these two T-shaped pins. We put them into the recesses that are inside of here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little square recess where the T-shape belongs to. And in there, that's all good. We can slide this on. Very nice. This is already feeling very heavy and solid. Okay, next up, um, the grip and trigger system. First of all, we take our short cord. We shove that in here. Good. Then we take the trigger. You see there's like a little bit of a cutout for cord. Right, then take the trigger and shove it in between the cord through that hole out there. And then it should need a little bit of pressure and then it'll slide down. We can already secure that using its pin. I'm not aligned, no I am. There we go. And then this one up here, I'll just put it in roughly where it belongs. Then we need these priming arms. The long slit part belongs towards the front. It needs that slit geometry so it um, has a bit of like clearance before fully opening. Otherwise uh, the slide would just slam against the rear grip and it wouldn't open. Um, the part of the lip become, uh, belongs on the outside. So we put on um, this pin with the T shape again. And then we align this through all of this. Yes, very nice. The other priming arm. And then we take the security rings. Um, the parts with the T ends have little uh, notches in the front here. That's where the uh, ring will engage in. Um, I already tried these. So they should just go in relatively easily. If yours do not go in easily, why is it? it keeps on turning. There we go. <laughs> like it should hold fairly securely. Um, if your rings won't slide on easily, you can either try making them out of PTG, which gives them a little more flex, or you can take uh, pliers like that and just hold the like the pin and the top of the ring and squeeze it together like that so you get enough leverage to close the damn thing. Okay, we'll make a knot up here and really don't over tighten this. You can already try if your trigger still works and if this part is nice and springy. This looks good. So we'll tie all that up. There we go. Cut off the ends. And cinch the ends so they don't start fraying. This looks good. Next up, we can connect this. Um, you just use the big for the middle. There we go. Well, it, it can almost take a bit more of a turn. This kind of works well for adjusting the stiffness of the connection. So you just take pliers and start turning the pin until it's really hard to move and then you can hammer it in. That ends up with a very satisfying click. Then we put this on here and this on here. It should have enough play to just move out to the side a little bit. And then we attach more of the rings. So like that and like that. If you're printing out of PLA, this will probably be a bit stiffer. I already rebuilt this thing a couple of times. 
I noticed some last minute issues, so I remade this part here. So th these are, uh, this is the uh, second time these things have been installed. Right, then we take our actual proportion string. This stuff, it's pretty nice, but I don't know if you can get it where you are. It's just the brand name is Okai. Yeah, this, this stuff, I'm not affiliated with them, but I like the string. Got it off eBay, so I'm not even sure you can buy it wherever you are. Oh, another little note that I just noticed. If you're printing without supports here, this may interfere a little bit, so just make sure the barrel is completely unobstructed by bridges. Now it's clean. Okay, then we take this, tie a knot, so it's somewhat firm. And we can prime. Then we can tighten it a bit more, whatever the string will give us. And then we'll do a double knot on top. And we can already try, this feels very responsive and clicky. I am happy with that. We'll fully tighten it as fast as you, uh, as far as you can go. Cut off the ends. Singe them. I don't even like Paris. Then we take the muzzle cap. You should probably print that out of orange material, but I have found gold looks a bit better. Up until the point that I realize it's the Thanos blaster. <laughs> there we go. And the last pin. And that's this thing built. So we can take a max, slap that. And this is just a normal like retention mag uh, thingy. So it doesn't have a lever. To get it out, you just push the mag back, like use your thumb and push against here and it should move out relatively smoothly. It'll also get smoother as you use it. Right, let's load it. That works really well. Um, yeah, now you can kit it out with whatever side or whatever you want to use. Um, for example, shameless plug, these sides from my printable side, they are flip up iron sides that you use with a kitchen rubber. So yeah, I'll also put a link to those in the description. Okay, I hope you enjoy this thing. I kind of did myself, took quite a bit of testing. I really like the feature that you can just flick prime it like a Corsair, but have uh, as many shots as your Mac can hold. And it also feels really nice to just load like this. That went far. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed and thank you for watching.